Hey everyone, we're at the BMW Autonomous Test Driving Center in Sokolov, the Czech Republic, and I'm joined here by Dirk Ahrens. He's in charge of the Level 3 functional and design integration of Level 3 Autonomous Driving at BMW, and today we're in a new BMW 7 Series plug-in hybrid. That's probably not very relevant, but what are we trying to achieve here today, Dirk? Maybe kind of walk us through. We want to give, give you an impression what is it really like to be driving Level 3, meaning you're being driven by the vehicle. We we really want to encourage you to look around, talk to me a bit more intense like this, okay. even during driving and see how oh, does that feel good, does it feel confident and, and so on. And we also invite you later to, to use a bit of the onboard entertainment, streaming services like YouTube and like Bundesliga, so German Football League sure. and see a bit what can you do with your time. Now, you're not needed to, to be in the driving task anymore. So question for you, so how does BMW or the industry define level three? Does the driver have to be in the driver's seat or I can be on the passenger seat? Yes, so that is still mandatory for you to remain in the driver's seat. Okay. You have to remain uh, with your seatbelt on. You have to be in a position where we can still see that you're there, meaning we have a driver camera there in the instrument cluster, similar to level that two functions. Track your eyes. But it's yeah. not needed that you look on the road, but we need to be able to see your head, your head direction and your eyes, that we, we know you're there you're not sleeping uh, and so on, so that you'll always be able to take over if we need to. Thanks. All right, so okay. let's give it a try. Cool. Then we start by <laughs> manual, uh, driving. manual driving. So that is our highway entry amp, uh, ramp, uh, if you like. Sounds good. <laughs> so tell me about the, the track here and the facility. So essentially a brand new facility. This is a, yes. how long is the track? Or the highway, yeah, really. Exactly. It's so a highway, really. That is our highway uh, loop. It's called the uh, Autonomous Driving Highway, ADH. Uh, and it's about six, 6.2 kilometers long, going a full round. So we come out in the end where we started. Um, you see now there's a vehicle waiting for us. So like a traffic jam, you can activate level two if you like, That's or right. just approach uh, by manual driving. So doing IO for level two. Okay. And once we're in a stable position following the vehicle, we're talking about level three in general. Is there a top speed uh, imposed on that as well? So on level two plus, for example, on the new i5 and 5 series, it's 130 kilometers per mm -hmm. hour. And what about level three? You mean from a regulatory standpoint? From a regulatory standpoint, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's basically different uh, from, from country, country to country. To country. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about with Europe, maybe first, uh, there is a distinct uh, legislation called ALKS R 157. So, and that is allowing you to uh, implement up to 130 kilometers per hour. Um, but we chose uh, from our point uh, to make a first implementation uh, to go to 60 kilometers per hour in, in traffic jam situations to be able to exclude all random situations like in very fast driving situations, something is on the track and so on. That is what we try to try to avoid. Understood. And what about the U.S.? What's the regulation specifying there? Uh, I think uh, in the U.S. Uh, some states are now uh, developing regu uh, regulations like uh, Nevada and, and California. Um, and uh, still we, uh, we have to figure out in which state, uh, which, uh, yeah, which offer we, we want to bring. Okay, so now we're in the fully autonomous mode, basically. Level 3 is called personal pilot, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that car is just basically yeah, trying just to... cutting in, simulating okay. a bit of traffic for us. And of course the BMW drivers, so no blinkers, okay. Mm -hmm. You have taken control again. Did you uh, go to the um, acceleration? Acceleration, okay. Yeah, okay. No. So now you're driving manually. So, so now you have to activate it once again. Yeah, but please go in the right lane. Just trying to see if it's going to do it by itself. Yes. No, not, not when you uh, cross lanes. Okay, so already. Okay, personal pilot again. Yes, so. If you take over with the pedals uh, at some point, uh, you have so will you end it. So basically, yeah, if you but, accelerate on but, your own, you end yeah, the whole but process. But you have to keep in mind, as this is still a development vehicle, gotcha. we want the developers to be okay. able to take over quickly. For the, for the customers later, you can push the whole pedal, okay. and only when you get to a kick down, that would be the takeover action. So Understood. that is not final, uh, final implementation. Understood. So at this point, gotcha. Mm -hmm. The speed is controlled based on the distance from the yes, car in exactly. front, and also by the speed yes. limit that's on the road. Exactly. So you, so if there is no car in front right now, it will go up to 130 kph based on what I see out there, right? Or No, because the personal pilot is limited to 60 Oh, 60, okay, so that's why this, the 60 is on the right uh, side. You see Got it, it in your okay. cluster with the, um, the, um, the turquoise color one turquoise, turquoise, yeah. 60, so that is our limit. Understood. You cannot switch it. Okay. Um, and the, if the vehicle would go away, uh, then at some point it, it's getting further and further, you will get a takeover request. Okay. And what you could now do, uh, 
to the onboard entertainment, yeah. get some streaming. So now it doesn't have to track my so eyes anymore. Basically, it's only gonna track no, you, the head you can, and, and I invite you to, to look away, so try try some things out okay. uh, so deliberately. Let's see Bundesliga. Like Bundesliga it takes a, a second to to load, but it will okay. be there eventually. Oh no! Okay. So you have to trust the car, yes. really. Gotcha. That is, uh, of course, a big point okay. of the level. So this was like really unplanned yes. because I was ready to take over yes. and then, okay. <laughs> yes, but sure. If you're looking outside, you're of course wondering what the normal case would be once you're used to the system, you're outside of the driving task and totally distracted. And of course, and that is the big issue of the level three, we must be able to solve all those situations all the time for, for safety reason. And maybe something dropped yeah. from a uh, semi in front of us, uh, very uh, unusual. So you knew I was uh, coming and you just let me kind of sure, be just distracted. Sure, sure, okay, <laughs> smart. <laughs> <laughs> My heart stopped for a second. Yes, I got to admit that. Yes, you know? <laughs> but we know what we're doing, you know, or the vehicle cool. in this case. Yes. So, but right. as we're so, not allowed to, so now you have to, to, take over. to leave the lane, exactly, okay. you, you can switch off. Put the uh, button S yes, exactly. Take both hands and now manual driving. It's starting. So you go yes, around exactly. that. So we solve the situation in terms of safety, um, and that is also the the plus that the driver is still in the driver's seat. So he will see eventually there is something and take over. Uh, but even in this situation, if the car would have gone further away, uh, of course you get a take over request anyway. So you will not be standing uh, two hours uh, behind the obstacle like that. That is more like in level four, you're sleeping, mm -hmm. then you would <laughs> notify the driver. That is easier in, in, in level three. And What kind of messages or what kind of notifications will you get to alert the driver? So I'm, I'm assuming some sort of vibrations in the steering. You're getting some light notifications probably yeah, we here have three, as well. Let's see, okay. three channels uh, to, to get to the driver. It's, it's optical, okay. it's, uh, it's visual of course with the lights going to yellow or in blinking. And the third one is that we do uh, deliberate braking jerks. So when you wait in the takeover request, and we will get a takeover request as our intended road is ending in a few meters. You see it there right, right now. Take control now. So it's starting with a yellow takeover request and when you wait it out for s several more seconds it will do a bit of the, those braking jerks as I said. Okay. and at some point it's going from yellow to a red takeover request so getting more critical that you really take over and if you would not take over we will get to a, what we call a minimal risk maneuver so we are, would stop in the lane as a safe state driver is not doing anything we need him okay something might uh, be wrong even a medical emergency maybe so we always get to a safe state there's never a shutting off during driving okay yeah so always a deliberate action to take over uh, and driver is always knowing what is happening and it's never a sudden change of uh, yeah got it and what are the turquoise the blue lights significance on the steering wheel so i saw them as well driving fully autonomous yes so that is part of the overall hmi concept you you have seen in the instrument cluster we have this this coloring and we want that the driver associate this color with level three okay. so with it when always when you see this kind of color either on the steering wheel or in an instrument cluster for you that is a signal okay that is the mode where i'm allowed to to do all this stuff with the driving not, or not driving related tasks and so on um, and when you see other colors that you use from from level two the green color that is the signal for you to stay uh, aware eh? of course we have to drive a camera in level two it will tell you to look back onto the road but just in case of course we use everything we can uh, to avoid mode confusion as good as possible. And from a regulation standpoint or regulatory standpoint, do you have to have those light signals on the steering wheel? No, there's no no distinct no. Um, um, demand from, from legislation. Which so is just for testing purposes. Yes, exactly. And then in a production series car, how would you uh, no, uh, use so, the visuals? Uh, yeah, it, no, that, that is the production. Oh, it's production, okay. So gotcha. there's no regulatory uh, this is something demand BMW to have wanted it like this, to but implement. it's how we want to, to implement it, Got it and how we want uh, the car customer to stay always aware of, of the mode uh, he's in. Yes. Right, Dirk, so one more question. How close are we to production series on level three? Yes, so uh, we intend to have it uh, ready for the customer to order by the end of this year or beginning of next year. Okay, and do you need additional hardware in order to have level three in your car or are there any current products that get a DOTA upgrade? Yes, so uh, for level three we need uh, additional hardware, meaning we need uh, additional sensors, especially laser scanner in front. And we also need uh, specific hardware for redundancy, so for safety reasons like energy supply um, and also braking and steering system. 
So not all vehicles are equipped with the uh, with the hardware, and it cannot be rolled out just by a software update. And do you have maybe an indication which models or which car will get this technology first? Yeah, it will definitely be in the in the seven series first, uh, and going to Germany. Um, for further information, further models, further countries, we will have uh, additional um, information um, coming in the second half of this year. Got it. And. When we're talking level three globally, what are some of the challenges that probably the most complicated or toughest to yes. overcome? Uh, I think it's uh, um, when you see there are always uh, specific laws in several countries regarding traffic rules. And what is also uh, for us a big challenge that the way highways are built is different. How big is the lane? What kind of lane markings are used? What, what kind of boundary hardware like rails uh, and stuff? And we have to be able to cope with all this, including specific signs on the road, not only for speed limit, but maybe there's a construction site coming up, stuff like that. And that is always uh, very different in different countries and also the traffic itself. So if you're thinking of, of a market like China, where it's very dense traffic, a lot of close cut ins, that is very uh, more difficult for us to, to have a product that is working as the customers need there than in a maybe a bit more regulated traffic with bigger gaps like you see here on the highway or on, on German highways, for instance. And which country or market has the more, more relaxed regulations or which one it's easier to develop for? Yeah, for us it's good uh, that for the European market there is actually a distinct regulation. So I think that is the first uh, bigger market where it's a, a unified uh, legislation. So you, you do it once. Uh, we do it for the Kraftfahrt Bundesamt, so the German authorities, okay. and then we would be able to roll out in the whole ECE region based on that homologation. In the U US, for example, the states have specific laws, so you need to check or do some adaptions maybe for depending to which state you want to go. And I think that is starting right now in some states like Nevada and California, those regulations are very close or already implemented. And you always have to check how much uh, specific adaptions do we need to take to get to a new market and do an um, evaluation of, of effort and yeah, market potential. Understood. Is there a scenario in the future where level three could be used within city centers? You mean on, on city like, highways? Like or normal really city driving, where basically the car driving. takes over over shorter distances, maybe just like traffic inside city, essentially. Yeah. I think there is a big step from the technical standpoint uh, to go there. I, I think for a customer that is a valuable product because the time gain is not only in the traffic jam, but it is uh, valuable for you everywhere. And the driving in the city or a traffic jam on city roads will also occur a lot, also in commuting time. Um, but the situation variety, of course, in the city is way bigger than on a highway. So there are pedestrians way more frequently, um, all those crossing situations, uh, traffic lights, and you have to, yeah, cross traffic, uh, everything must be mitigated perfectly. So from a lot of uh, technical uh, standpoints, it's way more difficult than the highway. And that is for us the decision to implement the first step going to a market with a big technical innovation like that on a highway with a controllable speed up to 60 kilometers per hour. And of course, go further from there, extend the speed on highways, but also develop to, to other use cases, getting more close to the city, definitely. So now a, a safety question, because of course, customers usually ask that question. It comes to level two and level two plus right now. So what kind of safety precautions are implemented within the car? And maybe tell me more about the, the testing process and the, mm. the amount of kilometers yes. that you test. Yeah. Is it all virtual? Is it yeah. physical testing? It's a, it's a combination of, uh, let's say, classic testing in the vehicle. But of course, with a big part, data driven development and what we call reprocessing of data. So we have specific uh, equipped vehicles with a lot of hardware similar to this one, which is taking data from all those relevant situations. And afterwards, we can re uh, reprocess this data in, in very yeah, specific racks uh, and always uh, do an evaluation. Do we react in all the situations correctly? So we have uh, KPIs or key uh, performance indicators defined for all safety relevant scenarios like um, yeah, there's an obstacle on the road, there's something reaching from the other lane inside you, there may be pedestrians and we have target values we have to, to prove that we are reaching um, before we can release it uh, to the customer. Understood, perfect. Now we have a surprise coming up. Yeah, so let's see. <laughs> Now I was ready for it. <laughs> yes, it's totally different, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, you know. 
once you experience it and but you, you were trust kind the car. Of, uh, trust, trustful. Yeah, I mean, it's, I trusted the car after the first time, and yeah. I'm assuming that's a soft piece anyway. Yes, that's, so. uh, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, we, we used the LiDAR sensor, yeah, for those situations. That's a, a big use case uh, for like random obstacles because. Uh, with camera only and radar, it's very difficult to static objects detect them perfectly. We don't want to break when there's no obstacle, so not a false positive. And so later, a lidar sensor empowers us to to see like static obstacles to to smaller sizes up to. So this is where where our intended road is, uh, is ending. So that is kind of a use case of the takeover request. And we want to see obstacles up to a size of like a pellet, okay. where you can that could actually fall from a semi or so um, and not only big obstacles like this uh, so that is why we, we have to laser scan it so yeah. right. which company do you use for the lidar it used to be an Israelian company is it the same one or you've changed this provider yeah, it's, uh, it's Inovis so you know yes. okay so same one okay, mm -hmm. yes. okay gotcha. all right everyone so once again level three autonomous driving in the BMW 7 series Stay tuned for a lot more news coming in the future with this technology. Dirk, once again, thanks for having us. Thanks for the demo and for the information. See you next time.